fucking go. Do I have everything? Maybe I have everything to do this video. Whatever. Uh, I talk a lot. Sorry. I'm going to try and make this video <laughs> as short as possible, but I say that every single time. But yeah, so we are going to make a focus, a lock, target, ability. Uh, this is something that I, I only want to do for the melee, obviously with guns. That would be a little cheating, especially with the way Lyra is set up where you shoot towards the center of your screen. So we can't have that, but uh, this would be cool for, for uh, the melee system. But yeah, so let's... Uh, <laughs> let's Let's jump into it. Maybe I should say, I, I've got a lot more coming. This is only the third video. Uh, I was thinking I might have upwards of eight in this uh, little melee thing. Again, I want to make the melee cool. I want to make it robust. I want you to feel like you're John Wick. I mean, I want to feel like I'm John Wick beating people up and stuff. So uh, stay tuned because I got a ton more to go, but let's, let's jump into this one. So the first thing that we have to do is go under Shooter Core. We have to to actually create the ability. So uh, most of the abilities are gonna be under your input and then your abilities. And then, I mean, you can really just copy any of these. Um, I do actually have to show you something that we're gonna be doing. Uh, so you can't just copy these, but for now, just go ahead and copy one of these. Uh, this is what the logic is gonna look like on the blueprints. So we're going to have this activate ability, and then we're going to get the active weapon slot. We're going to make sure this index is zero, because that I, I've been setting it up where my melee system goes in slot zero, the handguns in one, and then I think the rifles in two. Um, I might be able to do a shield or swords in, you know, I might move the rifles and stuff. But what this does is this keeps us from being able to lock on while you have a rifle equipped. So if uh, you're doing it any other way where you don't have your weapons slotted to a specific slot, or I guess in a specific slot, uh, that's not so great. So this is the quick bar component. And I think um, in one of my previous videos, that's where I have this slot index. So um, that one is, I forget which video it is. I might throw a link to see which one that one is in the description, but um, go back and, and check that one out. Uh, if, again, you're not doing that, you might have to come up with some other system to check that you are in the melee system. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do off here is if we're not, we're ending the ability. We don't want to stay in it if we don't have a melee system. Uh, if we are, however, we are going to do another sphere trace, right? I'm a fan of these sphere traces, but uh, we're going to go to the, the trace info. So this is a macro. And then in here, uh, this is almost, I think this is actually the exact same logic from the melee ability that uh, uh, Lyra comes with stock. So I don't actually think I've changed this. I've literally just copied this. So now uh, you're going to kick out the socket. You are doing a distance. I've set mine to 500. You can bring it you know, lower if you want the ha avatar to be closer, you can put it out to a thousand if you want to be able to lock on to someone far away. Uh, I think Lyra was originally 350, but they used a larger sphere trace than I did. So I'm actually using a, no, I guess I'm using a pretty big one too. So I'm using 90, I forget what theirs was, but uh, the start trace is going to go to the start, end in the end, uh, actors to ignore, and then the Lyra character, we're going to bring that out, and then the pawn. So again, this is almost the exact same thing. I think I did turn the debug off uh, after the video. So on this out, uh, again, a lot of this is the similar logic to the the melee. So we are going to check to see if we hit anything. If we're not, we're ending the ability. Uh, if we are, we are going to save the hit actor as a hit actor. Uh, this Lyra character uh, that's coming out of here, we're going to save that here. This is going to be important. We'll get to that in uh, a little bit. So then we are going to check to see if our hit actor has an ability component. And then if that is valid, I should actually probably uh, end the ability there. That's something that I sometimes forget to do, forget to include stuff. But uh, let's put that here. And then we'll just come off here, grab that, and save. So that way, if it doesn't have an ability system, like maybe an NPC or something, um, I guess technically you could just go back into here. But uh, I think I mentioned that, that on the NPCs, I will be doing an ability system, maybe. <laughs> maybe, I don't know yet. Haven't gotten that far, but we'll we'll get to it. I will keep you updated on videos when we get there. So uh, we are going to check to see if we're on the same team, because this is something I don't want you to be able to lock onto 
a teammate or maybe I do. I don't know. I might have to come back and play with this one later when I do some other stuff with uh, the game when we get to there. So uh, as you can see, though, I'm pulling off here. I'm printing some stuff out. Uh, I love to print stuff out when I'm, uh, I guess, creating new things. Uh, it makes the debug process amazing. So I'm grabbing that hit actor, printing that out, grabbing the library character, printing that out. So that way we see. Uh, so this is a custom function that I programmed in C++. I know you guys don't hate me. Uh, I did get into C++ on this one. Uh, surprise, I bet you didn't know this was going to happen. Uh, so notice this is a Lyra ticking gameplay ability. So uh, gameplay abilities do not have a tick by default. I think Unreal did that on purpose. Um, however, there's a way to do it without creating your own gameplay ability. Uh, but I don't like it. So uh, first I will show you the C++ way that I've done it, and then I'll show you the other way. But uh, let's get into the C code. So uh, go ahead and open up your C code or your, your writer. And uh, what I've done is under this ability system, um, I don't I don't add stuff through Unreal. I don't like doing it the way that they do it for whatever reason. Um, I, I'm an idiot, I guess. I don't know. I just... I don't, so I always just go over here, I right click, and then I add a new file, uh, and then I name it what I want. So I've got my H file here, and my CPP file here. Let me put this down. Um, again, this will be up on the, the GitHub for you guys to take a look at. Um, I'm not necessarily gonna walk you through the code. Um, I'll just kind of touch on the, the functions. Um, but I've got my Lyra ticking gameplay ability, uh, and I'm just extending the Lyra gameplay ability, right? Uh, so then I have set ability tick enabled. This is the function that you're going to want to uh, to enable, and that's going to give you the tick ability. So if you go into the C, I've got the includes here. Um, it's just it's the one. I'm not pulling a ton. Um, so that's kind of the cool thing is you don't have to modify. These are just two custom classes or two custom files class. <laughs> I forgot what they're called in uh, C. But anyways, super. Super simple. I'm not modifying anything. I've just, it, you know, and look at this one's. This one's 30 lines of code. This one's 40. So there's not much that you have to add. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm making sure that we're gonna to turn on the tick, and then that's it. So uh, once you turn these on, then I think I've got what is this, the super. Uh, I forgot where I have um, the tick ability. But again, this will be up on GitHub. But it's just I added it right under here under the Lyra gameplay. Uh, ability, and then I just called mine Lyra Ticking Gameplay Ability. So you can call it Lyra Gameplay Ability with Tick. Uh, I guess that would probably make more <laughs> sense. Uh, Lyra Gameplay Ability underscore Tick, maybe. Um, but anyways, uh, name it whatever you want. Again, this will be up on GitHub, and then uh, let's get back into the uh, the blueprints. So. Um, again, what I've done is I'm just, I'm enabling the tick, right? And then um, what I'm doing is I'm waiting for the input to be pressed. So what that does is that's gonna turn on the tick. This ability is not gonna end, right? So if you notice um, on end disability, I've, I've got stuff that's gonna be running after that. So the whole time this is going to be ticking. And again, the reason for that is the way that you're gonna do it if you don't want to make your own custom classes, I'll, I'll show you the, the logic, the code, the blueprints for that. Um, but you're going to ha have to cast to your actor. And I just, I'm not a fan of doing that. I, if any of you guys have watched enough of my videos, um, I try to cut down on casting whenever you can. Um, if you go into the shooter uh, mannequin, you can look up tick, right? And you're going to notice this doesn't have tick enabled by default. So, um, I didn't want to do tick. Um, that's why I have it in this ability, and we're only activating it um, when we activate it. And then when we press the button again, that's where we're going to end the ability. Okay, so we're going to go back down here, and once we end the ability, we're turning the tick off. So we're calling that same function. Um, we're turning it off. And then we are setting our characters to nothing again. Um, and again, I always like to, to print stuff out to debug. So when the tick is on, now here's what we're doing. We're going to get the Lyra player controller from actor info. 
we're going to get the controller and we're going to get the x value and the y value and then we're going to set the controller rotation now the reason why we have these two coming off here and on on this one what we're going to do is we're going to get our lyra character so these are the variables that we set right off of the trace and we're going to get our lyra character we're going to get the actor info that's where we're start or that's what our find look at rotation start is and then our target is that hit actor now we're only grabbing the z or the yaw and the reason for that is that's going to kind of give us our character looking at it if you do um do the x and the y i guess technically you could do what would that be maybe the the y i think i don't i can't remember the character's face in x or y um i just i don't like it i don't think it looks natural it doesn't work it's gonna center the camera funky but um once we run this that's it so that is the logic in here it's pretty i guess self-contained self-explanatory um I don't know. I always say it's easy, and then I mean it's not easy when I figure it out. I'm like, how do I do this? It takes me a little bit to figure it out. But once it's done, I look at it. I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. So uh, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So now, if you guys don't want to do your own custom uh, C code in here, so rather than making this a custom class, just make this a normal Lyra gameplay ability. So the first part is the same, and then coming off here, um, checking the team. So rather than going into this ability, we're gonna come down here off of different teams, and we're gonna cast to hero shooter mannequin, okay? Uh, we can just go ahead and copy this function right here. Oh, deleted that. Uh, copy, not cut. Uh, and that's what's going to plug into here, and that's our get Lyra character from actor. From here, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to make a custom event okay and I'm just gonna leave it custom event because I'm not gonna mess with it at all I'm not doing this um, this way I like it the way that I have but the two inputs that you're gonna have to add are your actor and then that is going to be an actor ob object reference okay and then you're going to need a Lyra character so now the reason why I named the first one actor and not the second one is because, again, I'm going to delete this. Uh, but you need to know which one's which because if you don't do it right um, here, then it's going to mess you up. So we'll go ahead and compile this. Once we have that, we can pull off of this pin and do our custom event. Now, whatever you name this custom event, uh, that's what you're going to be calling in here. So we're going to get rid of that pin so we're not running into this function so you can see this pins unconnected uh, so i'm going to show you that this will still work and then from here we're going to wait input press and then end the ability so what we're going to then do is grab this hit actor go into the actor grab the lyra character and go into and you name that lyra character again i'm not going to just because i'm i'm going to delete this as soon as we're done uh, but i want to show you how to do it so once we have this, what we want to do is we want to override our tick function, right? Because that is not set up. And then we're going to go ahead and grab this logic off the tick function. I guess you don't need that print, but it's coming with. So from here, what we need to do is set actor tick enabled we're going to make sure that is set uh, i guess technically when you do that i think you'd have to do another function Ugh, sorry this is not what i'm wanting to do <laughs> but uh, for the purposes i will have to show you um, so on the end event we're going to have to call this again i just thought of this just now um, we we'll have to get rid of that custom function, and then we're going to have to do, I mean, I guess technically you could do a not, right? Let me go up here and grab this, because I already have it. And I always forget how. No, I'm just going to do, never mind. Okay, so I will do another custom event. Uh, and we're going to turn it off. All right, so this time we're going to turn it on. This time we're going to turn it off. Uh, on to end ability, we are going to do 
off this pin again. We're going to do custom event zero. Uh, I'm just going to call that. Go ahead and compile that. That should be all good over here. And then off the tick, uh, the one thing that we do have to do, let me move these out of the way. A little bit annoying. Uh, one of the things that we're going to have to get off of here is we have to get controller because that is a function from the gameplay ability and we don't want that. I'm going to have to go here and get rid of this. Uh, I'm not going to add these variables, um, but notice, right? So we need to make sure that we know because both of these, um, you can plug both of these into here because both of these are technically actors and so the thing is if you put this in the wrong one you're going to have your character looking backwards so that's why i have this actor right that's our hit actor that's our target so i'm plugging that one into the target pin and then the lyra character is going into our start so and then that's just that's our tick so i will show you how this works uh, so notice up here this is just my little debug um, I'm getting is tick enabled and I'm doing it off of a P. Uh, so this will print out up to the top left and we can see that. So going into the game, the uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'll hit that P button and then on the top left you'll see that the tick is enabled false. Go into fighting stance and then run over here and lock on. You can see I'm locked on now, doing the same thing. Hit the P and it's true. So I have the tick enabled. And then I unlock and hit P again, and it's false. So there you go, it is working. All right, so uh, that's it. That's if you wanna do it, it custom function C um, or blueprints. So I'm trying to think where's, so I'm gonna delete all of this because I don't want to do it this way. Um, compile and save that. And then uh, in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and reconnect this. Uh, and get rid of this. And then I'm going to go back up here and replug this into here and get rid of all of that. So that's back to doing it with the custom. Um, the other thing, oh, sorry, I should have mentioned. Uh, if you need to reparent to get this Lyra ticking, you're just going to go into your class settings and then the parent class. Uh, if you are doing input, abilities let's say you just copied like the grenade ability right um, this is gonna have a Lyra gameplay ability you just go custom class and then you can do Lyra ticking whatever your custom class is so that's how you do that on this one I didn't really go into kind of adding the ability set and the inputs and everything like that I've, I've done some videos on that in the past uh, I will throw a link down there in the description if you need to know how to do that. I think by now, if you've been following these, uh, you, you should know how to, to add input abilities and stuff like that. But um, if you don't check out the, uh, the other link, I've got a video that shows you how to do that. So that's everything. Um, hope you guys like that. Again, stay tuned because I have quite a few more bits to the melee stuff coming. So hope you guys like it. Uh, like, subscribe, all of those things, and I will see you guys next time.